Brendan Messerty, who joins us this morning. MM, thank you for coming around. Thank you, Shopper. Good morning. Uh, good morning. MM is not alone. He's joined by engineer Promise Atten, who is of the Department of Agricultural Engineering of the University as well. He joins us today. Promise Atten, thank you for coming. Good morning to you. Yeah, so nice to be here, Shokwe. Good morning. Well, let's get talking. Now, if you recall some few months back, on regularly on this program, we have callers and people uh, calling to talk about issues about lecturers of the university. Uh, some are employed and were owed salaries for long. We dig deep into the matter as well. That's why we have uh, uh, staff, members of staff of the university on the radio this morning. Let's get, let's get talking, first of all. Uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Promise here. Uh, lecturers were employed. Now, in the first place, my, my assumption is that there was a need to fill a vacuum. Tell us about that. Uh, well, um, I joined the university sometime between 2012 and uh, 2013, early 2013. Okay. Uh, at that point, uh, there was an adventure rally that uh, some staff members are needed. By the time I got to my department, let's begin from there. Mm. Uh, a case study of my department. Uh, what, what, what department is this? Department of Agricultural Engineering under the Faculty of Engineering. engineering. Okay. Uh, by the time I got to my department, uh, there was only one staff member, Engineer Peldum, um, who was um, recruited, some, uh, who was with the former College of um, Agricultural Bioba. So he started the department uh, as the only staff of the department. Four of us joined him, and that made it five. That's 2012, okay. 2013. Now, uh, at that point, we had students in between 200 level, 100 and 200 level. And when you get to 300 level, that's when you begin to do core courses of the department, 400 and 500, think about graduating. Now, that gave need for for us to look at the first initial meeting of the National Universities Commission the NEC. and the Council of Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria okay. sometime in 2013 and uh, we had a few of us were junior, junior academic staff let me use that word because some of us just finished master's degree at that point okay. and uh, there was no PhD holder so there was need for that uh, particular advertorial again uh, we got some staff who joined the department later based on the requirements. Now, uh, what happens, the process basically is the fact that when I got in there, I saw there's a process in the university. At the close of um, the third quarter of the year, getting to the fourth quarter, when the budget is on the verge of being prepared, mm. what the university naturally does is to send a memo to, to the respective departments and uh, through their HODs, asking for them to um, list out areas of concerns, areas which they need staff members mm. to fill in. For instance, in my own case now, we need a PhD holders so that we can say, okay, this is a department generally. So at that point, uh, when that letter came in, that, uh, uh, the letter was replied and the concerns of the department in step of staff requirement to make sure that we meet the staff mix was sent to the management of the university. That's the process that was done across the other departments in the university. In the university. Before we continue this conversation, your department, you had agricultural engineering, the, your course was accredited by the NUC, was it? No, we're coming to that. Okay. Now, it was the first visit of NUC in 2013 All right. to see the program. Uh, current came as well, that particular year as well, to see the program, see the progress, and tell us that they are coming for accreditation, for okay. accreditation in 2015. Okay. So, that list, I'm telling you, was sent to the management of our requirements for the department. That was done across board in all departments of the university. Okay. So that came in 2014. Okay. So that gave rise to the university getting across to the visitor of the university, that's the vice chancellor, uh, the, the governor and um, the state government to tell them that we have deficiencies. We are going in for accreditation, which is very crucial. Mm. And they submitted 120 names, names which the state government graciously, um, trying to see how they can grow the university, approved. 120 to be recruited. Let, let's get the matters in perspective now. Yeah. There was need for lecturers to be employed, of course, for course to be accredited by the yes. NUC. So the requirements that the university put forward to government was 120 names yes. of that, that to was be recruited lecturers. To be recruited, and 90% of that uh, were lecturers, okay. basically, and some core areas of concerns as well mm. from other units. So um, that was approved. 
and we were happy as a people because uh, we know that at least we have some good hands to come and join the system. Okay. So at some point, uh, I, I'm not a management staff, no doubt, but later on I had to, uh, some information I was told, it was made public that that recruitment process, we ended up having 279 as against uh, the 120 that was approved by uh, the, the administration of Governor Godfrey Pabio that was on ground at that time. Okay. So uh, if you put that side by side, you can see that in the, uh, at the initial point, you've got some 159 excess. Uh, uh, and, and, and you know, promise, before you make this allegation as to inflation of numbers of required staff, you must also understand that you must come from a standpoint of fact. No, I, let's, let's get the facts right. Where did you get the facts from that the numbers were inflated in the first place? I'm not saying the numbers were inflated. I'm telling you that that process saw to the recruitment of 279, which I am not a manager. Where did the numbers of 250, you said the initial numbers or names submitted was 120. Approved, not submitted. Let's get, let's get the facts right. How many names were submitted, if you have that information, to the government for recruitment by the management of the university? I don't know if you followed the processes which I've said. If, and I'm asking you, you said there was a required, there's a need to fill some gaps. To fill some gaps. And you said and here. That was, that was sent across to uh, the visitor of the university at that point, which he approved. How many names? You said 120 just. Yes, that's what. That's what. No, that's what, what the university said. 120. Names were submitted. Not from the names, 120 20 positions. Positions. Okay. They asked uh, to be filled in the university and approved by the state government. Let's okay. get it right. All right. So um, the recruitment process somehow got to, we got to understand that 279 staff members were recruited. Now that's not the problem. These are Akwaibum sons and daughters. We quite understand very well. Okay. And you can't tell them to go home. Let me give you a case study. At the time I was doing my PhD at Michael O'Barra University, there was a recruitment done by Professor um, Hilary Doga, who was the vice chancellor of that institution then. And the number got to 460. The, management of, the new management of the university came in and the new governing council. And they discovered that the subventions that were given to them by the federal government was not enough for them to take care of staffs on ground and the 460 that were added up by the administration that just got passed in the university. Okay. So um, they, 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 they just came out bold and played, look, we cannot pay. pay. And they relieved those staff members of their appointments. Right. And these are people that worked for months. Before they were asked to go. They were asked to go. Right. And that case uh, has been dragging, uh, for instance, the Senate in December 2017, the federal, Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, asked the university to reabsorb them. So what the university did at that point was, age, head of respective departments give us core areas of needs. Core areas of needs. Okay. Which you feel is very critical to your department. And that was done at some point. So the management of Akwaibo State University, from my own perspective, did not, you my did, not, did, not, now, did not do that bad. Okay. And they reached, re reached out to the visitor of the university to tell them this is the problem which I deal we have. And magnanimity, I have to say this, quote, quote make sure, okay. magnanimity of the governor at that point must be commended for considering the fact that this as sons and daughters of a Kwaibu. And the Vice Chancellor uh, also, well. also uh, absorbed their 257. We, for a fact. Because uh, absorbed them not knowing how to pay them. Can we say that? Well, uh, if you say not knowing how to pay, I think um, at some point you heard the Vice Chancellor talk on Sunday. Okay. He talked about the fact that he went to meet the visit of the university, the governor, to x-ray the situation, which the governor uh, clearly said that um, when there is an improvement on possible accruals from the federation account of federal allocation that wouldn't type. They would look at how to sort out that very salaries that are owed. Just a good thought. Let's get your colleague on, on, on the radio as well. Uh, MM, thank you for hanging there. Uh, I haven't listened to Promise. I'm not sure he answered a particular question. It was trying to dodge, but let me ask you the same question here as well. 120 names or positions were up for. Uh, employment from the university, quoting him now, 
and you have 257 persons occupying those 120 positions. I'm, I'm bewildered as to where the additional numbers came from. Well, Shobe, as he had said, um, uh, first of all, I'm not a management staff. Okay. And um, you might not have known what other needs arose while the 120 was being recruited. And it's, it became 257 after? 279, actually. 279, 279 rather. Okay. Actually. Now, you know, in a university where it's growing, for instance, when we came in as, as I was part of the 214, Recruitment part of the 279 I were recruited. Okay, great. Now, when we, when I came into the ICT unit, um, about uh, four months after was the very first NUC accreditation exercise. Okay, and Shope, each and every one of us that was part of that were properly involved, and that saw us being able to have accreditation for the the Faculty of Natural and Applied Science. All the six departments that were up for accreditation was fully accredited. Now, what do I mean? It means that those that were employed, each and every one of us, got involved and were relevant to bring in that accreditation. accreditation. So, so I might not know if it was because of further need to to make sure that that accreditation went on successfully. Right. So, so it's possible because if it was not, I am sure that my man would have said no. We want to stick to our 120 if that was a problem. Yes, that was uh, still talking about the matter as well now. Moving forward, uh, your colleagues, you are also part of the 2014 recruitment exercise. We have loads of your colleagues call on this particular radio station disgruntled and angry about being owed 14 months salaries, arrears. Now, what, what do you, in your opinion, you're, you're involved with this, what led to the 14 months being owed? Okay, so, well, um, I'd like to say that um, I was privileged to be part of those that were agitating at that, of that time. Okay. For it was actually 17 months initially. Okay. But um, it was the fact that you know we were employed a few months. I mean, almost uh, about a year after that employment, both the former administration, I'm saying administration, and the university's administration changed. Okay, All right. that is the former government of Guam State and the former school management. management school management changed. Okay. And so so that must have led to that delay because a new governor was in place and a new vice chancellor and principal officers were in place. So it is possible that at that point now don't forget that there is an initial issue on ground one twenty mm. which the former government had approved. And the new government had said, okay, let's look at it mm. from that point. Mm. So I am sure that during that time, we were actually innocent about what was happening because... Were you agitating yet? Yes, we were agitating at the point where we thought that why are we still working and we are not paid. But we don't understand why. Do you think the reason, what reason was given, uh, you gave a reason as to change of management. Do you think that's enough to abruptly stop your salary or your amendment as the case might be because there was change of pattern in governance and leadership was that enough reason to stop okay. payment of salaries and what is due to people who are really working no to correct that we were not paid at all so it wasn't stopped or well, you were employed we employed but not being paid yes we were not and the reason you gave is because there was change of government and leadership that did not allow your salary to flow through yes that is what i think must have been the issue because if it was not I mean, we should have been paid road three months after we were employed. Employed, but that did not happen. And when we tried to find out why, we were told, "Oh, look, it's, we are in the process of being regularized and being put into the mainstream." But we could not get more information on that. But we were just being faithful enough to believe that yes, things would be better. So, for how long did you work for without being paid? Actually, we worked for about 16 months. Yes. For 16 months. Yes. Now, whilst you were working, what were you being told by the school management to keep working? Money is coming or go home and stop working. What, what happened? 16 months is a year and four, a year and four months. Yes. Uh, well, for me, uh, I think uh, the, 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 we, we had a hope that, look, do we have issues on ground? Or oh, you had no option? We had options to go. But you see, you know, Shopper, 
it's difficult to get a job in Nigeria. My point exactly is you had no option, so you stayed exactly. back. Exactly. So, so we had hope also that look, this this thing will be done. But but after a while, we thought that look, it was taking too long, uh -huh. and then we needed to find out for ourselves what was really going on with us. That is why we actually went to on a peaceful protest to the governor and said, our governor, we are here, and we don't know our fate. And that was when he actually swung into So he took protest on yeah. the part, hold on a second, Mr. M.M. He took protest on the part of those lecturers or those persons who were employed in 2014 to get the governor's attention to paying their salaries. No. That issue was already on ground reaching out to the governor, but we, as a group of people, thought that, okay, at that point, 17 months, I'm sure you know that you might not... 17 really, months, yes. You might not really have, at that point, you're pushed to war. Obviously. Natural instincts of a human survivor. Yes. And so you're saying to yourself, look, well, whatever the management is doing, I don't care. I want to know by myself what's going on. So, so there was management allying with the state government. Remember, both of them are new. And that's why you've been out 17 months. Basically. That's it. Right. Let's get promised. You're, you're a lecturer, I promise. Yeah. How, your, your colleagues, you have been paid regularly because you were employed in 2012. In 2012. Now, how were they discharging their duties? Having been owed 17 months salaries, didn't that not hamper your own job as well? Uh, well, it was pretty difficult for most of them, I must uh, say at this point, because uh, you uh, sometimes if uh, you want to go uh, from the university, you have to look out for one or two, which were your friends to pick them up. But be that as it may, I, I, I think um, in all of this, it's unfortunate that, uh, but let's, one, let's not forget one thing. Okay. These uh, 17 months we're talking about uh, did not just uh, occur when the present governor came on board. This concern was from 2014 under the administration of the previous government, governor, of which um, the, the present administration inherited. Well, governor, governor, governor is a continuum. That's all my course, course exactly. So I, I think uh, for, for most of the this struggle started right from the era, the previous era of, of, of administration in the state. Is there any justified reason whatsoever as to all these employed, duly employed individuals for 17 months? A justifiable reason in one perspective. In, in any perspective. You, you, well, uh, you, 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 you gave out employment so like this. In as, much, in as much as we understand how difficult yeah. it is to really cope at that point with the salaries being owed, one thing for sure, which I am grateful, and my colleagues as well who are affected, are grateful is the fact that the magnanimity of the management and the state government, I must still say this for a fact, to consider absorbing completely that number of staff as compared to what was obtainable in uh, uh, Michael O'Barra University and other universities. When you say this is, like that, this is, you say this is magnanimous, I'm taking it back, promise. You know why I'm taking it back? Because it, these individuals are professionals. They have a role to play. They are not being paid for free. They are paid to do a job. So this is not doing them a favor. In fact, it's an exchange of service in the first place. So where does that magnanimity come into play here? When it comes in, I, I was only comparing this side by side with what happened somewhere else. But no two situations are the same, promise. You would agree with me. The two situations are parallel. No two, si no two situations are the same, ever. In well, life. Uh, let's talk about this also. Okay. Um, uh, 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 what really, I think what really led to uh, the relieving of those lecturers um, in Umotike was the fact that the subvention which um, the state government, which the federal government, through the Federal Ministry of Education, gave to the university did not increase. In fact, it is still sacrosanct. What they are getting is what they've been getting previously. Since. Yes, so that particularly led to, though uh, we told uh, that at some point they tried to accommodate these staff members. So that led to slashing of salaries of some staff members in that university by fraction. But that did not happen here in Akwaba State University. You had people being paid 30% of their salary. You wait for the next month to get a reminder. Now, uh, the idea is. We understand the governor here, the mm. governor of Kwaibu, increased the subvention uh, to the university. Of the, to, of the university. Mm. And that led to uh, the payrolling 
of the of, of, uh, of the, the two hundred and something nice staff members that we recruited in twenty fourteen, right. which is very fundamental. I right, just hold your thought there. I mean, let's get your conversation live on the radio. So, what at what point did your fortunes change? That you now get to spell home every month. Okay. Um, in July, July of 2015, mm. was like our breaking point. <laughs> <laughs> when we told ourselves, look, uh, we need to actually know what's going on. And so we made a peaceful protest in the university, in the university, uh, the Ikora Baden main campus. Uh, it was peaceful. We just uh, was there outside and just uh, crying out. And then later on, we took ourselves to the government house to solicit an appeal and, and to, uh, to the governor that we are here, your children. You're arrested. We are arrested <laughs> and we need help. Now, um, what, what has always endeared me in that incident was that while we were on our way to the government house, mm. people kept calling that, look, you are going to finish you. That when you get there, you will not come back. They will lock you up. And we said, look, what do we have to lose? <laughs> but we were so grateful that the then um, secretary to the... Uh, state government. No, no, um, the permanent secretary to the state government house mm. came to address us and immediately told us that action is on ground, that he has already had knowledge of it and it was on ground. But because, you know, of the desperation and seeing that we are here, that immediately will make sure that uh, the governor is on the know. And by August, that was when we were finally paroled. That means that in less than one month, you were normalized. We normalized. And that is when the subvention was increased to accommodate the 279. All right, we're about to take a break right now. When we come back from the break, we ask you what happened. You said 17 months became 14 months. So what happened to the remaining 14 months? Or what will happen to the 14 months based on what government has told your group? We also ask what various unions have done about this particular matter as well. All of this will form uh, the basis of our questioning when we come back from this quick break. Talking points continues. The phone lines have been buzzing whilst you were talking. People were eager to equally join the conversation as well. It's talking points on a bright Tuesday. We'll be right back. Drop it. The hottest jams. Inspiration 105.9. <laughs> The Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Youth Wing, Aquarium State, holds our annual Youth Conference 2018. Theme, Manifestation of the Sons. Date, Thursday 27 to Friday 28 September 2018. Time, 5 p.m. daily. Venue, Holy Ghost Ambassadors Ministry, number 8, Ekwanya Street, Uyo, Aquarium State. Host, Apostle Yenime Andy, PFN Youth Leader, Aquarium State. Dr. Silvanos Ukafia, State Chairman. The Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. We ought also to love one another. Join Samuel in Norbong Akban every Thursday at 11 a.m. on this dial for a life changing experience in the world of agriculture. Agriculture and you. It's a 45 minutes program designed to x-ray the major issues in today's world of agriculture. Agriculture and You talks about farming practices, commodity availability, agricultural research, latest agricultural implements and tools, and variety of issues that will make agriculture the new centerpiece of the nation's economy. Make it a date every Thursday at 11 a.m. on your number one family station. Inspiration 105. 5.9 FM. You cannot get it better elsewhere. Okay, welcome back to the program. Still listening to Talking Points this Tuesday morning on Inspiration 105.9 FM. Joined here by two gentlemen from the Aquarium State University, Mr. M.M. M. Harry Takudo, a systems analyst and ICT unit of, of the ICT unit of the Aquarium State University. He joins us today. Mr. M.M., M., thank you for coming around one more time. Engineer Promise Ethem is here. He's of the Department of Agricultural Engineering. He joins us. Mr. Promise, uh, thank you for coming. 
Anthony Realm. My pleasure. All right, the phone lines were buzzing earlier on whilst we were talking on the radio. Now let's open the media platforms to allow you to join the conversation here today on the radio. Remember, 0818-222-9105. That is 0818-222-9105. Or call 0902-684-1059. Respectively, our WhatsApp page is equally open to allowing you to join us here this morning. WhatsApp number, ladies and gentlemen, is 0906-030. 8705. Before we get back to the conversation on the radio this morning, let's get some callers to also join 